Hold. Five, four, one, six, two. Connected. Um, okay, Tony. I'll talk it. Well, good as well. nice and Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So I was recently watching a YouTube live stream on the temporary offline ham radio channel and they were demonstrating an interesting project called Hamshack Hotline. Now don't be misled by the name, Hamshack Hotline is not a number you can call to obtain endless amounts of support, or is it? Well, Hamshack Hotline is a free dedicated VoIP telecom service strictly for the ham radio community. Now, before you switch off, let me emphasize that this project is not meant to replace any RF radio traffic. This is not another Zello bore fest. Typically, you would have Hamshack Hotline connected phones in your shack, clubs and other ham radio related venues. Now, once registered, you're assigned a phone number, which anyone on the network can use to call you as well as calls, fax is also supported, if required, although I think email replaced faxing many years ago. So how do you get yourself set up on the Hamshack hotline network? Well, first you'll need a supported device. You can use an app on your phone, however it's best to get an actual VoIP telephone to first set up your account. You'll need to purchase, or if you already have one, a supported endpoint or telephone. According to the Hamshack Hotline wiki page, it's technically possible to support any SIP endpoint, but it's recommended to choose one from the list on the wiki page. This will make configuration and setup run smoothly without any issues. Now, I personally have the Cisco SPA303, and I picked this up from eBay for less than 20 UK pounds. I'm sure you can even get them cheaper if you shop around, especially if they're in used condition. Now it's extremely important that your SIP endpoint is unlocked so that the configuration can be changed. If the phone is locked, then you'll need to know the admin login details to change the configuration. So please check that before purchasing one. And once you have your device, you'll now need to create an account on the Hamshack Hotline website. When your account is ready, you can then submit a ticket request. The information shown on the new ticket will require you to fill out some personal details. These will include your location, so just select from the drop down on the help topic. Now that's to ensure that your device is registered to the correct server for your location. You'll also need to enter your call sign here. The MAC address from your SIP endpoint must also be entered here. This can be located on the serial number sticker on the underneath of your SIP endpoint device. If there is no sticker, then you may be able to get this from your configuration page. Just plug the phone into your local network and navigate a browser to its IP address. Your city and state information will also be required before you press the submit button. So after a couple of days, I received a message through the ticket system asking me to provide a copy of my ham radio license. I simply replied to them with an attachment. So if you want to be a little bit more proactive, then simply reply to the ticket with the PDF of your license as soon as you've sent your first ticket request. I'm sure this will speed things up. And once they have processed the application, you'll receive a message to the ticket system. This will include instructions on how to configure your phone. So with the phone plugged into your local area network and powered on, you need to enter the following URL into a web browser. Now your URL will most likely be unique to you, but please remember to change the x.x.x.x to the IP address of your phone. Now, if you don't know this, you can find this by looking in the phone settings or logging into your home router and looking for the SIP device. And once you've hit enter, the phone will download its configuration, reboot, and then after a few seconds, it will be connected to the Hamshack hotline network. Your telephone number that others can reach you on should be displayed on the phone's LCD. However, if it doesn't, for whatever reason, you can find your number on the configuration ticket where you copied the config URL from. Now that you have your phone configured and connected, well, what can you do with it? Well, you can obviously call other ham radio users on the network and even dial into some RF links. The Hamshack Hotline website holds a searchable directory where you can search for other members' telephone numbers. You can also view a list of RF link systems, for example, into the All-Star network, and some other users have also bridged into digital networks such as DMR tour groups or YSF reflectors. So let's just dial up Hubnet and take a listen. Hold five, four, one, six, two, connected. In the US, I won't mention the hospital, uh, it's not fair. But anyway, I happen to be one of the people contacted. Would you like this to carry on the research? 
because I'd had a lot of experience on that sort of thing, although quite some years ago, I worked in research uh, on that uh, 1968 to 1974, so, you know, it was a long time ago. But anyway, I, I was the only one that was interested. No one else wanted it. But there was a very, very big snag. I'll just make a break. Now, if I wanted to talk through this RF link, then to key up or simulate the PTT, then I will just type star 99. And then when I finished talking, I would then press the hash key to D key, or otherwise known as the pound symbol, depending on which area you're in. Now, another feature of the Hamshack Hotline website is the interactive map. Now, this allows you to browse users from around the world on an easy to use map. Simply zoom into the area of interest and click on an icon to show the user's call sign and Hamshack telephone number. So there we go guys, a brief overview of the Hamshack hotline and how to configure it. Now if you guys have a Hamshack hotline phone, then please give me a call. If I don't answer, then please leave a message. Now if I get enough voicemails with some interesting messages, I'll combine these and put them into a future video, which could be quite dangerous. Anyway, until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.